it is Wednesday and Wednesday is the day that I should be working from home but I'm not and I'm really actually kind of frustrated this morning because my dogs are sick so they must have gotten into something in my backyard which I talked about it on Tuesday but I should be staying home with them today since part of our, my agreement was I would get to work from home one day a week and I just kind of feel like it's just not happening right now and I guess I'm just like super duper frustrated about it and it's it's just aggravating you know because I bend over backwards and Stan bends over backwards for me so it's not you know really anybody's fault but you know just it is what it is I did though this morning grab a few things from my studio that I'm not really using to decorate with so I decided I was going to take them into my office and maybe today we will do a little decorating because I just moved into my new space like two weeks ago so not very long ago but I'm so busy at the office that I don't really have time I'm not even fully unpacked so I gotta get that done. I'm hoping I can get that done today. I'm kind of going for a... I don't want to say like Tumblr theme, but more of a... Like... I don't want to say tribal. Like a Southwest style that's a little graphic with some golds and things like that. I'm going to go around the office and look and see kind of what we have that we're not using and then maybe we'll do like a game plan of stuff that I need to get from my office. I have a picture that I'm going to bring in that's like gold leaf feathers and what else do I have? Um, I have this really cool like photo book from me and my big ideas that oh I was going to grab scrap of paper and that's what I forgot. Dang it. But I have this really cool um I'll, and I'll show it to you when I get to the office. But it's basically this book of prints that you can frame. Which I got that. And um, I actually got that at Hobby Lobby when it was 40% off. I'm also just not feeling like super great this morning. I don't know what's up. I don't know if it's just because I didn't sleep very well because of the dog's being sick. Or what. But as I'm driving today, I'm having my first vlog uploading. And... It'll be interesting to see. I'm going to try to remember to film more, like, when I'm doing things. Okay, come on, Van. So that way I kind of have, like, some more different stuff for you guys. But we'll see. So, really cute. You guys know that I love doing pen palling and things like this. Well, last night, Brett... Brett has this guy that he follows on YouTube and I don't want to say it's like a man crush but Brett is really into like survival stuff and like that kind of thing typical boy stuff right so he has this guy named Hiram I think it's his name Hiram something that he followed and Hiram quit making videos for a long time and Brett was like kind of hurt by that which is adorable because he really missed his videos well he came back and I guess he said that he's going to do a giveaway for the people that have watched his videos and stuck with him and subscribed to him and stuff like that. So Brett came in to my studio last night and he's like, do you have any postcards? I was like, maybe. And the only postcards that I had were like the super girly ones from me and my big, or from uh, A Beautiful Mess. <laughs> So I gave him like the one that was like sort of manly. It said, what's up? And then I also gave him a card that was like New Mexico stuff on it. So he's sending both of those to enter in this giveaway. And at first when he came and told me about it, I was like, oh, are you going to get a pen pal? And he's like, no. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Well, this is like the day after that really big storm we had in Rio the arroyos are still like super high and the ditches are like super high like all this stuff that's green that you see out of my window normally is not green because we've been in such a drought but we've actually had quite a bit of rain this summer 
and the, the cool thing is it's supposed to rain tomorrow and Friday or today and Friday I don't remember so we'll even be getting more rain which is okay by me so I got asked on Instagram what I do outside of YouTube and my blog and I do have a full-time job I work for a financial firm I am not a financial advisor I am not licensed but I do work for a financial firm what I do is I basically assist I'm the branch operations manager is my like official title I basically assist the branch manager in everything that he does um, I am relied on a lot and I have a lot of responsibility almost too much responsibility because Stan's book grows and we Stan is one of those advisors if you're looking for a good financial advisor send me a message and I'll put you in contact with Stan Stan's one of those advisors that he truly truly watches his accounts and he constantly contacts his clients he does a lot of research he's very very intelligent and he what I like about Stan is he oh good I did remember my camera <laughs> I was like shit uh, what, what I like about Stan from an advisor side of it is he doesn't get emotional about the market I think you know a lot of people in this industry learned in 2008 and then when we had a little bit of a correction here about a year ago a year and a half ago and Stan's one of them that you know has has learned and what I like about his investment style is he's not afraid to move around now I know there's a lot of people that like the whole buy and hold strategy which if that's your strategy hunky door that's fine it works too but Stan definitely believes in you know changing funds and stuff like this he uses you know, he, he believes in like a whole wealth strategy which I think is a very interesting and he's not afraid to talk to clients about their needs and their wants he's not the type of advisor that you move your accounts to him and they just sit there and rot he's very active so that's who I work for I work tech he works for LPL as a broker dealer and LPL is not a bad company to work with uh, we have a great back office and shout out to anyone on T15 but you know with every back office and broker dealer you know there's some issues but it's just you know it is what it is I I enjoy my job I had originally thought that I was going to become a financial advisor I don't know if that's really in my cards anymore at least right now I haven't really decided I feel like I'm kind of in limbo on what I want to do with my life because part of me loves the financial industry and the other part of me loathes the financial industry and the reason why I loathe the financial industry is because I've been in the industry since 2006 so nine years it has changed drastically in nine years more regulations more just BS you have to put up with and I get it because you know there are bad financial advisors but you know the ones who are getting hurt by all this are the good financial advisors because they're spending double the time doing compliance than what they need to do and you know it's getting hard to do business it, it truly is you know a lot of people nowadays you know thank goodness this is coming back but they're finally starting to save for their future again for a while nobody was really saving for their future because they were just trying to survive and I get that and I understand um, I don't have as much money saved as what I want I <laughs> You know, you, it's just difficult to, to be a financial advisor starting out. I'm very fortunate that if I ever wanted to become an FA and start out, uh, Stan is probably like my biggest cheerleader. But 
we'll see. I'm still just like at that crossroads where I just, I feel like a lot of things in my life are in kind of limbo, so to speak. So I just need to decide and really focus on what is best for me. I talked to my grandpa at the beginning of the week and he, my family lives in Michigan. Some of you may not know that, but they live in a very, very small town called Sunfield on Sunfield Highway in Sunfield, Michigan. Is there any idea how big it is? Well, a couple weeks ago, a town that I worked in for like two years, Portland, was hit by a tornado and it destroyed a bunch of churches. It um, hit the Rite Aid building they used to work in because they used to work in pharmacy. Hit that building. Didn't knock it down, but did some damage. Took the roof off the Goodwill, which is crazy to think about. So, uh, but I was talking to him and he was saying that Portland's cleaning up and dealing with that. So I was really glad to hear that. It's just, you know, it's so hard when you hear of something like that six miles from where you used to live. And it hurts that there's nothing I can do except for donate money to, you know, their efforts. And I understand, you know, funding is important too, but, you know, that's, that's, that's where I was raised type thing. So, I don't know. I'm sure Portland will survive and rebuild and it'll be okay, but it's still just, it's hard. And I actually got asked a question when I did my, um, my series about how I got to New Mexico. And someone asked me if I would ever move back to Michigan. And I don't think I could ever move back to Sunfield because it would be too hard and too difficult. I loved, I hated living in a small town like my whole life. I hated it. Absolutely hated it. I wanted to live in a big city. Um, I absolutely hated, hated living in a small town. It was driving me crazy I was living in such a small town. And when I moved to New Mexico, I realized that I kind of missed living in a small town. But Sunfield is dead. There's nothing there anymore. They have, you know, a school. They have a little, like, gas station. They have a post office that's open, like, two hours a day. They have a bar. That's, like, it. There's no bank in Sunfield anymore. There's nothing at all. So that's just really difficult for me because when I grew up, my family owned a diner and every day, you know, I would hang out in that diner and it was just like so crappy that even my mom's diner, my grandparents' diner that they used to own is sitting there empty and for sale because no one can make it. No one can make it in Sunfield because Sunfield, people who live in Sunfield do not support the businesses. And part of the reason is a lot of the people who did support the businesses are gone. They've passed away because that generation supported the, the town. Um, no one, when we owned that diner, rarely were there any younger people who were like, I would say in their 20s and 30s, that families would come into the diner ever. It, it just didn't happen. It was always, you know, the older generation who would come in because they would support the town. Well, they're passing away now, or most of them even have passed away. So it's very difficult to own a business in that type of a small town. I also don't think I could move back just because I have been independent for almost 10 years, living 1,500 miles away from my family and everybody. And I enjoy that independence. So I think if I ever did move back to Michigan, I, I would move back to Michigan but I don't know if I would move back to that area because I want to be near the water. That's my biggest thing is that's where I want to try to end up. I don't know, you know, per se if I'll move back to Michigan or not, but I like New Mexico too. I love New Mexico. I just, it sucks that we don't really have like any really big lakes around here and the lakes that we do have, everybody goes to, so they're super crowded. And I mean, that's not fun either. Running to the gas station. 
and get some caffeine this morning. So the lady at the gas station it was really funny because every morning when I stop, sometimes I get gas and I always stop to the same pump because it's pump number 10 and I'm superstitious like that. Oh, he went behind the bushes. He was really cute. <laughs> but she's like, no gas today. And I was like, no. I said, um, that my, my car was actually full. And she's like, oh, she's like, I just thought maybe pump number 10 wasn't open. And I laughed and I'm like, that's open. So am I like the only adult that is super duper duper excited about the Minions movie? I'm actually going Friday night to see it in 3D. So I am so excited for the Minions movie because I love the Minions. Really pick a lane. So I'm trying to think like what I'm going to do this weekend because next weekend I have to present at the Toastmasters officer training. So at the Toastmasters officers training on the 18th, I think it's the 18th, probably should double check that. I am presenting about the social media for Toastmasters, which I guess I need to decide how I'm going to present that. And then I'm also presenting the VP of membership and the VP of PR training. So I did it before and it was fun. 45 minutes is really short to be honestly presenting that much information, but I'm excited to present the social media side of it because you guys know how much I love social media. Also that day, the 18th, I'm presenting to one of the women's networking groups about social media so I need to actually get with my shell about that because I forgot that I'm doing that <laughs> but it should be fun I love speaking like public speaking is one of the things that I love to do which I'm for those of you who do not like public speaking or are terrified of public speaking I highly highly recommend joining a Toastmasters group because it has helped me so much I'm very conversational when I speak. I'm not the most eloquent person, I guess you should, you could say. I have my own speaking style. Now, when I'm presenting technical information, I have the ability to throw in like a little bit of humor in there to make it somewhat interesting. When people ask me about public speaking and they're like, how do you do it? I, the, I, it's Toastmasters. Toastmasters is one of those groups that you don't realize the benefit that you're getting from it until you don't go for a while. And then you go to present something and you realize that you suck at public speaking. <laughs> so Toastmasters is a great organization. There are many, many, many groups here in New Mexico. And if you are interested in Toastmasters, there's many groups around the world or clubs around the world, not just here in New Mexico. But if you are interested in Toastmasters, go to toastmasters.org and you can search your club by city. There are so many. I suggest visiting two or three of them to find a club that really fits you and what you're looking for. Just a thought. What do you guys think of the new format for So You Think You Can Dance? The whole Teen Street versus Teen Stage thing. I don't know. I'm on the fence about it. I, I liked the other format better where you had 10 female and 10 male dancers and blah, blah, blah. So You Think You Can Dance is one of those shows that goes in spurts for me because I have to really like some of the dancers. And it just, like, the last few years, I loved the Tapper who won last year. And I liked Melanie a lot. But it's like... I don't know, it just goes in spurts with me for who I really like as a dancer and who I'm just kind of meh about. I haven't, I don't watch the auditions or like the Vegas Week stuff. I normally start watching it when it's, when they do like the top 20 announcements. I'm sorry, I think having like five weeks for auditions and the Vegas is, is too much. I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing, like, a couple hours of auditions and then maybe one about Vegas and then one week of, like, the top 20 or something. Like, I could handle that, but it, it totally lost my interest. I do, however, love the two team captains, Travis Wall and Twitch. Twitch has been one of my favorite dancers since I saw him on, like, season three or four. 
I thought he's an amazing dancer. I enjoy his energy and his personality that he brings. One of my favorite routines ever was the one that he did with Cyrus. And they were like the bionic men who were like fighting. And I mean, it's really cool. I, I'll see if I can find a link to it and link it below because it was a really cool dance. I just enjoy his dance style. And Travis Wall is like one of my favorite dancers and choreographers ever. Um, he did a piece with Amy to uh, the Chris Isaac song. I can't remember what it is. I'll try to link it below too. That was just absolutely beautiful. Another one of my favorite dances ever, probably my favorite dance ever, was one by Sonia. And it was the, it was Amy. She's such an amazing dancer. She was an all-star that year. And then the, not Ricky, but the other kid who was in the final two last year. They did this dance that was a tribute to a friend of hers that killed himself. And it was absolutely amazing. It was, it was called Thunder Under Something. But I'll see if I can find the video and link it below because it is one of those dances that just gives you chills because it was just the music and the, the piece itself was amazing. So for those of you who don't know, I love dancing. But I am looking for some good Netflix series to binge watch. So if you guys have any of your favorite series, let me know because I'm always looking for cool stuff to watch. Even if it's like documentaries, I'm definitely a documentary kind of girl. One of my favorite series ever is called Air Disasters. And the reason why I love it so much is because it takes like real plane crashes and then they tell you why they happen. Devastating. I wish plane crashes never happened. I also really enjoy like history. I love history, but right now I'm you know constantly watching Shark Week. There's a guy that was on Shark Week last night. I think his name was Noah something. He was an ex like Navy SEAL. He's from Australia. And he was attacked by a shark, lost his leg and lost part of his arm. Oh my gosh, he's so good looking. Oh, like he was, he, he gets back in the water with these sharks and like doesn't even think twice about it. Which I think is amazing because if I ever got attacked by a shark, I wouldn't swim even in the bathtub. Everything would be a shower for the rest of my life. below and the little arrow tacks that I'm using are from Target because I get their monthly box whatever it's called happy mailbox so I think I'm gonna use this one 
This one, this is Dream Bigger. The lighting in here is terrible, I'm sorry. Not that one. But I don't want to poke holes in these because I may want to frame them later. So I think what I'm going to do is use washi tape that I brought. I have these at Michael's. It's just like metallic washi tape. And I brought all of the colors because I wanted to um, mix the metals. Still a work in progress, but still all that crap to take care of. This is where I'm at right now. I love my happy planner so much that I even have one for my office. This is what I use to track everything that I do every day and what I need to do and some stuff like that. So this is one that I made from an expansion pack, but I still love it.